Hey guys, Mike with Motivate Fabrication. So today, I need to resolve a problem that I've been having going on for a while. Uh, about, I would say almost a year ago, I made this uh, rotary face converter from a, a surplus five horsepower, three phase motor. And uh, I got all the electronics in a, I think that's like an alarm box for your like, security alarms in a house, but I repurposed it into my, kind of my uh, junction relay capacitor box. But um, my problem I'm having is, is it starts off slower than I like, um, probably because my starting capacitor is slightly undersized. And it really wasn't too much of an issue in the warmer weather. But as it's gotten colder, it seems to have gotten worse. And I suspect that's probably just due to things being a little more stiff, like the grease in the bearings. But I'll give you a little example of what I'm talking about here. It uh, kind of comes up to speed. Almost seems like it struggles to come up to, up to speed. And it's the reason that's not good is it causes a kind of an extra, a higher current through the windings than it should have. And I do turn this on and off quite a bit. So, you know, I have it running my Hendy lathe, my Bridgeport mill, and my Grow vertical bandsaw, none of which I run at the same time, but I do turn it on every single time I start any one of those machines. So, I'll give you a little bit of example of what I'm talking about here as far as the starting goes. Uh, I'm gonna show you I have 220 volt input from that outlet coming into the phase converter, but I have a switch here up on my cabinet that I use to actually switch it on and off. So I'm gonna get you close down here so you can hear this, and I'm gonna turn it on here. <coughs> not horrible but I'd rather it to be more instant I think it would be better on the motor for long-term use uh, I'll turn it on one more time here so you know, obviously it would be preferred to have three phase power in the shop. That's never going to happen here. Um, being I'm running three machines, I've, I, I kind of have this set up to where I can plug them in directly. So there's two twist lock on this side. One feeds the mill, the one on the left. The one on the right feeds the bandsaw. And the one on the back here feeds show you here it goes over to the lathe over there so kind of got it sitting in the center of these three machines and uh, my plan today is one to look at what size capacitor I have in there for starting starting this motor up and uh, I ordered another capacitor um, based on what I think I had installed in there and I plan on wiring that up so I have more of a, a kick to get this thing going so that it doesn't sound like it's struggling so much so all right guys so I'll give you a little shot of this how I have this so you can see the two twist lock female receptacles here and the one here, each one of my machines plugs into each one. And now I'm gonna give you a view of the inside. Sorry for the shaking of the camera. To explain what each component is. So this is a magnetic relay, uh, or starter maybe you could call it. Essentially what it has as three separate poles 
And when you engage the primary side of the circuit, so the part that makes it turn on, it connects this wire to this wire, that wire to that wire, and I'm not using the third one. And these are all, you know, open box, eBay parts or surplus parts. Um, so this is how I'm able to remotely turn this on and off. These smaller wires here are what go to that switch on the wall. And then this part here, um, it's just like a terminal junction. It simply allows me to hook a bunch of wires together uh, easily. So all of these wires, when you tighten them down, they all hook together. These are all hooked together and these are all hooked together. You could do this with um, a really big wire nut, maybe, but this is much cleaner. So uh, I went this route. Um, this is a potential relay. And the purpose of this is to um, kick in or actually kick out this starting capacitor here. Once the engine uh, or engine, once the three phase motor gets up to speed, um, this senses, senses voltage and kicks out the capacitor because you don't want this in line or in circuit once the motor is actually running. And then these, um, these are the female receptacles here, here and there that I just showed you. And they're simply just basically tied in together uh, to run each machine. Uh, so to address my slow starting problem, this capacitor over here is a 270 to 324 uh, UF, so farad or microfarad capacitor. Uh, it has a 330 volt AC rating, which being this is 220 volt, um, you want something a little bit more than that to handle the current for the voltage, I'm sorry. And what I end up buying is, let's see here, this Packard, and it is 108 to 130 microfarad, 330 volt AC rated. And the plan is, is to get another one of these in here and I need to look if I need to do a series connection or a parallel connection I'll do some research because I don't recall off the top of my head and what that would do is, is I get a, a little bit of uh, more uh, jump start to this to get it going um, I am not using balance capacitors or running capacitors due to the fact that the machinery I'm running um, isn't that critical. They run fine. Um, being the voltage on each leg is about the same or close enough anyway. And if you're not familiar with that, essentially the purpose is, is on your three different phases, you'll have like 220, 220, and then your third leg, which is actually generated by the by this um, again, pony motor you might call it or the rotary motor it, it's going to be a little bit less voltage than the other two so it's slightly imbalanced um, for what i'm doing that doesn't really matter if you're doing like cnc or something highly precision then you would want to balance balance it out and the way you do that is hooking capacitors between that generated leg and the other uh, legs of the circuit. Um, I will try at the end of the video um, putting a wiring diagram of roughly how this is wired, but um, a very uh, brief explanation of how it works is, is uh, you take 220 volt service, so L1 and L2 if you measure across the two, you get 220. If you measure from one or the other to neutral, you'd get your 110. We don't have any neutral in here, so it's both L1 and L2. 
and you essentially uh, momentarily apply that voltage to the rotary motor with the aid of the starting capacitor on the third leg to jump it up to speed and then that capacitor comes out of the circuit due to that potential relay and that third leg that we're missing from the three phase is actually generated in the winding of this rotary motor underneath which is why they call it a rotary phase converter really the only difference between this and a static converter is um, a static converter simply uses uh, the two legs coming in and the capacitor to get it running and spinning which is what this rotary motor does it runs and spins but it has reduced power because you're missing one leg of, or one phase um, of the circuit so it only has like two-thirds its normal horsepower and using the rotary phase converter you don't have the horsepower loss or nothing as much of a horsepower loss so it's kind of a the way I, way I think of it is it's a static converter starting a pony motor, so to speak. And the pony motor acts like a generator for that third leg at, to which then powers your um, three phase equipment with much more uh, uh, smooth, you, well, not smooth, but actually three full phases um, in the right frequency so they can start and stop on their own without capacitors. So if you can kind of figure this out, there's some uh, question on how much um, capacitance or microfarads you need per horsepower. So if you take uh, 270, the minimum of the one I have in there, and add basically 110 to it, We'd be at 380. Um, now these are, you know, they have a range. So it's possible that this capacitor is just kind of wearing out because I know they have a limited lifespan or it could be due to the cold weather. I'm not sure, but I'm going to add this one in and then I will do a comparison of how it starts with the added in capacitor. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so a little bit of research and I realized I needed to connect the two capacitors in a parallel format. So it's essentially one terminal to the other, which uh, essentially adds the ca um, capacity together or microfarads together. And uh, I have tested it briefly and I think it's quite a bit better. So I'm going to close this up after I'm going to secure this here in a bit, but I'm going to close it up now while we're on video. Look my a test with both capacitors. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I think that made a pretty big difference. I'll have to go back and review the old video. It's not as dramatic of a difference as I hoped for, but much improved. So uh, at the end of this, I will attach a drawing of the rough wiring schematic um, and maybe a part number or two of the uh, components that I use. So hope you enjoyed, learned something. Um, Rotary phase converters are really not that difficult to build and uh, gives you a whole lot more options on the machinery you can buy. So thanks a lot.